world cannot take it away. So I just thank the Lord for his joy today. Oh, you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for your presence today. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the city. Um, this is, uh, I guess this is Pride Month. So I hope you, I hope you're proud. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Of what God has done, who and for you. And uh, I, I, I hope you let somebody know that there is a God and that he's able to bring about changes if you want to be changed. Amen. Nobody has to stay in the state that they are in. Nobody has to stay in the state that they're in. Amen. We, we can't even use that as an excuse, I was born the way I was. Amen. That's why he said you must be born again. Yes. So if you want to change, he's able to change you. Amen. If you open your Bibles just for a short while today, our, our lesson uh, is probably better taught than it is preached, but we're going to do the best we can in the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 10. St. Luke, chapter number 10. Luke is one of those thorough writers. He, he's one of those detailed people. You know, it's kind of a difference between... Uh, uh, men and women, women tend to be more detailed. Uh, you know, you ask a man what he wants to eat, he just says, give me something good. A woman will give you a whole menu of exactly what she wants. But Luke is a detailed writer. So let's look at Luke chapter number 10, verse 1 says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face unto every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You may be seated. As we go through these passages of Scripture, Prayerfully, we'll be able to point out some road stops to look at. You know, when you, when you go uh, uh, on a trip, I, I like to go slow enough so that I can look out and see some of the sights. Amen? Amen. Amen? And so a lot of times when we go through the Bible, we go through so fast that we miss some of the, the things that would be very beneficial uh, to us. And so we're going to try to take some time today to just look at a few things. First of all, in this particular portion of Scripture, we realize that there are more than 12 disciples. In this portion of Scripture, he sends out 70. And I want you to notice that he does not send them out by themselves. Amen. He sends them out by twos. He sends them out by twos. That's important. That's important. You realize to have a strong nuclear family, God has designed it so that two are more beneficial than one. Amen. It, it doesn't mean that you can't function with one, but two was done by design. It's kind of like uh, uh, having two eyes. You know, you know, God could have made you with one eye, but there's a reason that he made you with two. He could have made you with one ear, but you have two. He could have just stuck one nostril in the middle of your head, but he didn't. He gave you two. 
Not long ago, I went to the uh, eye doctor, the optometrist, and uh, they told me to put my hand over one of my eyes, and they asked me to read the chart, and I said, I can't read the chart. And uh, so they, they played with the chart and finally changed some things where I could finally read. And then they told me to switch, switch eyes, and so I switched eyes, and I could see the chart, and I could read, I could read pretty good. And then they said, switch back to the other eye. And I switched back to the other eye, and they, they changed the, the distance of the chart, and I could see it pretty good. Then they said, switch back to the other eye. And I switched back to the other eye, then I couldn't see it again. The point that it proved was that for me to have accurate sight, for me to have accurate perception, I needed two eyes to work together. And so God has designed it that we have two working together. And so when he sends them out, he sends them out by two. The Bible tells us when we go out by two, one is to watch and the other is to pray. We, we may not have the exact same jobs to perform, but we all have a, a, a function that's moving us in a, 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 the same direction. So the Bible says he sends them out by two. Now, I want, you to, I want you to, I hope that you understand as we read this passage that he's pointing out some real, some real important things, okay? How many of y'all uh, uh, are, are cartoon fans? All right, sometimes you were a cartoon fan. Now, if you're older, don't lie. Just raise your hand up. We're, this is not a, this is a no judgment zone. We're not going to judge you. Okay, all right. Some of you are like, well, I was born before cartoons. Okay, well, we're sorry. You'll have to catch up. Okay, uh, but, but I'm going I'm, I'm to show you how even in cartoons, God uses what's available uh, so that we might witness or so that he might have a witness. I want you to look what he says here. He says, then he says unto them, verse 2, the harvest is great, is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers out into the harvest. Now, th the problem is not with the harvest. There's plenty out there, but the problem is we don't have enough folk to do what God has called us to do, okay? Uh, we were talking this morning about all the shooting that's going on, okay? And I want you to understand something. Part of this, uh, you, you can talk about the people. We can talk about the, uh, the guns. Uh, but the problem is us. Yes, amen. Oh, oh, amen. oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. See, because you keep thinking somebody ought to do something. How many of y'all think somebody ought to do something? Come yeah, okay. Now, now, what you think is, some of y'all some of y'all think that the gun makers need to make less guns. Okay, that ain't going to stop it. That ain't going to stop it. Some of y'all think that the legislators need to put some new laws. Do you understand that lawless folk don't care about no law? Come on now, you live in proof. How many times they put speed limit 55 and you doing 65, 70? Come on now. You're just a bunch of lawbreakers. Now, if y'all ain't going to do that right, come on. Amen. So this is, the, no, no, no. See, you got to, this ain't about what's done on the outside. There has to be an inward conviction before people are going to do right. And you can legislate, you can, you know, it, 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 it's amazing. Uh, they're going to have a march. People are marching. And it's amazing. Now, I ain't, talk, I ain't talking to the world right now. I'm talking to church folk. Okay, it's amazing to me how we will join them in doing what they're going to do instead of doing what God has called us to do. See, what they do don't work, but what you do does. Listen, listen you know, we, somebody ought to do something. You're the somebody that ought to do something. What, what is it that we ought to be doing? The Bible says that if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves in what? Pray. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Your weapon, one of your main weapons is prayer, but you won't do it. You'd rather march. You'd rather do something God didn't tell you to do than do what God has told you to do. Do you know why the walls of Jericho fell down? Because God told them to march. What God says works. You go, y'all. You know, I'm concerned about what's going on. Well, be concerned enough that, that you find yourself on your knees in God's house. Yes. Yeah. That you're petitioning God. Do you know that right here he says that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few? What does he tell them to do? He don't tell them to start recruiting. 
He don't tell them to put employment signs out. He says, pray the Lord of the harvest. He says, if y'all would talk to me, something might happen. But the problem is, you won't talk to me. Amen. Have you noticed that couples don't get far when they just sit, you know, he sits in one chair, she sits in another, and they look at each other like this. <laughs> don't nothing happen? Not that you, no, no, listen, no, no, no. If you don't talk, if you don't say nothing, won't nothing be said, won't nothing be done. Amen, amen. Have you noticed parents? Well, I bet I, bet I say that. <laughs> For most parents, when you walk in a room and just look around, they don't do nothing. But when you communicate effectively, stuff starts happening. At least at our house it do. I know that wasn't proper English, I'm sorry. You have to communicate. You can't look at something and say, you know, you look at a, 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 some dishes in the sink. You can't look at the dishes in the sink and then look at your kids, then look at the dishes and look at your kids, look at your dishes. You know what you're gonna have? You're gonna have dishes in the sink and kids sitting on their behinds. What you gotta do is you got to tell them so late. You got to communicate. You got to get them instructions, right? Don't be scared. You got to give them construction. And sometimes they still don't listen. That's right. That's right. But at least you got to give them instructions. You know what? In this earth, God has made you, God has given you some authority and power in this earth. And there's some things that He will do, but He won't do them until you instruct Him. Amen. Amen. Do you know that some kids won't clean up their room until you say something? Amen. They'll just keep stepping, oh God, they'll just keep stepping over stuff. Some of y'all ain't never seen that, right? You wonder, you know, why are these why, why are these underclothes still sitting in the floor? And you, you know, you step over them, they step over. Them. You step over, you say, I wish somebody somebody get them. No, not if you don't say anything. True. So God says, I want you to say something, and the person that He wants you to talk to the most is Him. Amen. And He'll change things. Amen. So, so if you want, if you want gun violence, if you want to have an effect on gun violence, you can't gather up enough guns to stop it. But you know what? You can speak to God. Yes. And God knows how to, God knows how to change oh, yes. things. And the biggest thing that, pe that he changes is men and women's hearts. Yes. Now, you know, I don't think everybody should own everything because everybody don't need all that. Especially if you don't know what you're doing. You kill yourself. So you can remove all the guns. People still going to kill. You know, it's, it's going to happen. Now, and let me tell you something. Things are not going to get better. I don't know why y'all keep thinking that. I keep telling you. Don't y'all read the Bible? It says things are going to get worse. That men's, men's, they're going to wax worse. That's what the Bible says. They're going to wax worse. Now, if God says this, why you, why you think something different going to happen? Why are you surprised? Oh, God, I'm just surprised. Why? He told you what was going to happen. Yes. Don't be surprised. Be prepared. Amen. Now, listen to what he says. Verse 3, go your way, and behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Now, there's several things I want to point out to you. When bad things happen, I want you to understand something about God's will. Because somebody said, you know, if, if God had willed this, this, this would have happened. That ain't necessarily so. Now, I'm going to mess you up. God has two wills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has a perfect will. Yes. And he has a permissive will. Yeah. All right. That's right. The Bible says that God would that no man would perish. Yeah. That's God's perfect will. Yeah. But in God's permissive will, he has allowed hell to enlarge itself because folk are going to perish. When somebody dies, you cannot say that that is the perfect will of God. You can say God permitted it. But sometimes God permits things is because we did not affect his perfect will. There's some things God would have done had you said something. But you didn't say nothing. You, know, you, know, you don't say nothing until it's too late to say something. See, God so loved the world that whosoever, 
whosoever, that whosoever, he died for the world. He didn't die just for you. He didn't die just for me. He died for that whosoever would believe in him should not perish. So it's left up to you. You have to walk in his perfect will. Nobody can take you out of his perfect will. But even, I hope y'all understand me, but even when you walk in his perfect will, around you God's perfect will may not be done. But as long as his will is done in you, that's what you have to be concerned with. Okay, so the Bible says, the Bible says that he sent you out as, as lambs among wolves. Now, why would God do that? Why would God send us out as lambs uh, among wolves? Because, you know, when you, when you picture a lamb among wolves, you, I mean, think what it says. Lambs among wolves. When you picture a lamb among a wolf, what do you, what do you picture? What does your mind conjure up? Dinner time. Dinner time for the wolves. That's what it is. It's dinner time for the wolves. But I want you to understand, God, listen, but so, so Lord, what are you, wait, wait a minute. What are you trying to say? You sending me in a dangerous situation like a lamb among a wolf so that I can be ate up? No, 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 not at all. That's not why he's sending you there. There's sometimes God will send you Mr. Peaceful in a chaotic situation. And the reason that he's sending you there as a lamb, a, okay, anybody, uh, okay, anybody, uh, Anybody watch Transformers? Okay, okay, okay. You, you do understand, uh, you know, uh, there's a, the, the, the head of the Transformers is a guy by the name of Optimus Prime. You know, yeah, yeah. And so what would happen is, what would happen is they would roll into town, you know, and I, I, every time I see Transformers, one of my favorite songs just rolls around in my head. You know, when I was a little kid, we would sit in the back of the car and we would be we would be singing this song. And the song that came across my head is where the guy would say, "Hey, Big Ben, this is Rubber Duck. We ain't gonna pay no toll. We gonna crash the gate doing 98, singing Let Those Truckers Roll." Now, see, y'all didn't y'all didn't y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. See, that really is a church song, but y'all didn't recognize it. Okay, I'm going to give you the church edition of the word. Uh, 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 Jesus uh, told Peter, he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, okay, y'all didn't get this. Come on, come on. Hey, Big Ben, this is rubber duck. We ain't going to pay no toll. We're going to, y'all going to get this part. We're going to crash the gate doing 98. Sing and let the truckers roll. Okay, y'all didn't get it. Biblical version. Up on this rock I'll build my church and the gates and the gates and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Again. What God is trying to tell you is that you've got to crash the gates. See, you always knew when Optimus Prime rolled in with the boys, it would just be a few minutes that the Decepticons were going to come in and start some stuff. And when they did, what would happen, you would hear some, wah, 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 wah. and all of a sudden, Optimus Prime would be, this, 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 this truck, this 18-wheeler would stand up, and you would hear this music saying, Transformers, robots in disguise. See, see, God has you as a lamb among wolves. But what the wolves don't understand is that once God gets you where he wants you, you ain't no lamb no more. You turn into a lion. Why? Because he's the lamb of God that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Y'all got to get this. It's all about change. It's all about change. God wants you to be a change agent. Okay. Okay. See, the problem with some of y'all, y'all ain't got stirred up enough. See, stuff's going to happen until you really get stirred up. And say, see, you say, well, you know what? I, I, one of the brothers said, you know, this is heavy on my heart. He didn't know why it was heavy. I know why it was heavy. God got it heavy on your heart until you do what he wants you to do about the situation. And what he wants you to do, he don't want you to protest. He don't want you to march. He wants you to pray. Why? Because you said you are his people. And if you're his people... You got to humble yourself and pray. You got to seek his face. That's, but sometimes God has to put pressure. He got to put pressure on us to make us do. Okay, okay. Anybody remember? Y'all remember Bruce Banner? Yeah. 
Anybody remember Bruce? Yeah. Okay, I know you do. You probably got the whole collection. Bruce Banner. Okay. Okay. Bruce is Bruce until he gets ticked off. And he would tell people, you don't see me, you don't see me like this. Because all of a sudden, when he would get, when he would get ticked off, James' his eyes would turn green. And, and his skin would, uh, you know, his skin would swell up. You know, his pants would bust loose. You know, can you imagine the wardrobe bill this dude? His pants would bust loose, and he would be bigger than life. Why? Because he was taking on problems that were bigger than life. Don't you understand that when the pressures of life get to beating you down, all you got to do is reach inward because on the inside of you is, is one of the most powerful forces that exist because the Bible said that Christ inside of you, Christ inside of you is the hope of glory. All God has to do is put enough pressure on you to make not the Bruce come out, but let the Holy Ghost shine. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know when, when he turns into the Hulk, everybody runs. I mean, even his friends don't really like being close to him because they're like, we can't, we, hey, you can't be, you can't control. Say something about when you let the Holy Ghost loose, you, you ain't no lie, you can't tell what he's going to do. But all you know is that when he finishes, it's going to be a whole lot different than what it was when he started it. He'll smash, you know, some stuff in your life that needs to be smashed up. And all you got to do is turn the Hulk loose and he'll smash it. So you've been trying to preserve it. Now you need to smash it and wipe it off. Yeah. Smash it and get rid of it. That's what he wants to do. Smash it and get. So he sees you as lambs. But you don't stay like a lamb. He changes you. He transforms you. Be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. What does he transform? He transforms your mind. And a lot of us need a mind change. Listen, you, listen, some of y'all, you talk, well, I need to change my environment. No, you don't. No, you don't. All you're going to do is take a stinky environment, a stinky mind in a, in a good environment, and you're going to mess it. You ever, you ever seen people that, okay, you ever seen people, you ever seen people, you say, well, all we got to do is take them out this nasty house and put them in a, 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 in a nice house, and they'll be all right. Listen, 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 all, listen, all you got to do, listen, I'm telling you something. If you don't get their mind working right, you're going to have a new nasty house. That's all you're going to have, a new nasty house. It's going to be new nasty. You just move from old nasty to new nasty. This is why you got to have a change of, from the inside out. See, you, 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 you can't keep fixing up the outside and think, and think that's going to do something on the inside. If you have an ugly person that's on, ugly on the inside and you make them pretty on the outside, all you got is pretty outside, ugly inside, and pretty soon the ugly is going to come out. But when you do what God tells you to do, there are certain things you don't have to worry about. See, sometimes we, we, we worry about the wrong thing. Amen. And we put so much worry on the wrong thing. You know what? what I, you, know, you ever went to somebody's house and the table, I mean, they, you know, uh, dinner table is just, a, is just a, you know, when I, listen, sometimes people invite me to go out to eat with them, you know. And when they invite me over to their house, you know, they get to apologize and say, a Pastor, listen, I'm excuse, excuse this and excuse that. Listen, you invited me there to eat. You didn't invite me there to inspect nothing. And what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm waiting for is the food on the table. You understand? Listen, I don't care if the forks are plastic or silver. That ain't, that, 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 that's not important. Because, you know, break it down, I can eat with my fingers. I know, that's you know, you know. I mean, no, 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 no. You ever been to somebody's house to, to eat? They've been to some, and they got three or four forks. I'm like, just give me one. I don't need a butter knife and then another knife. Just give me one that can cut the meat and slice the butter. That's all I need. I don't need all that. Do you understand? See, because the main thing is what's on the plate. It ain't what's around the plate. It's what's on the plate. And so we got to learn how to make the main thing the main thing. You know, it used, to, uh, it used to trip me out. You go out to eat with some people. I ain't talking about none of y'all, okay? See, see I, I know y'all. Y'all start thinking, we ain't taking him out. He'll be talking about us in a sermon. <laughs> no, I won't. Okay. Well, I might. But anyway, you went out with somebody, and y'all eating fried chicken, and they pop out with a knife and a fork. You ever seen that? Who does that? I'm like, you know what? 
you're going to get left behind because you eating it with a knife and fork. It's going to take you forever to get your, see, you know, at our house, you better use your hands because you want to get, yeah. <laughs> While you busy working on your one piece, we, we on our third talking about, hey, it's almost gone now. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? You better make the, yeah, you better make the main thing the main thing. Quit worrying about it. People, you know, you, you having breakfast and people talking, where's the, where's the knife that you put the butter on the bread with? Listen, you better take that butter, throw it in the k roll syrup and sop them biscuits around there. You don't need no extra utensils. Yeah, because you know, you know what I'm saying? That's the main thing. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep the main thing the main thing. And the problem with the church and the problem with saved folk is we no longer have the main thing as the main thing. You think you come to church to have a good time. You don't come to church to have a good time. You come to church, number one, to praise him. Then after you praise him, you got to worship him. That's what you're here for. I mean, you go to the club, have a good time, then walk out and have a bad life. The church ain't like that. You ain't supposed to walk in church, have a good time, and walk out and have a bad life. Sometimes we come to church to get real. Come to church to tell him all about your, tell him, not everybody else. Tell him about your problems. So that when you leave, you won't leave the same way that you came. He does care about you, but you got to talk to him. Okay. I got to hurry up so we can get to the message. He tells them, don't worry about taking no money. Don't worry about taking your bag. Don't worry about your knapsack or your shoes. Ooh. Ooh, pull your feet back. I'm getting ready to go now. You know, we'll make sure before we go to church, we'll make sure that we got a spit shine on our shoes because it's important how our shoes look. We will prepare our shoes to go to work, to go to church, but we won't prepare our hearts to come to church. <laughs> no, no, no. You got to, no, no, no. Hey, listen, listen, there, there might be times you look up here and my shoes look too bad, I ain't wearing them. I'm just going to take them off and be up here in stocking feet. You understand? Because I can worship the Lord without shoes on. All right. But I can't worship him without the spirit and without the truth. There's some things I've got to have prepared if I'm going to worship him, if that's what I'm here for. Do you understand? You know, I, you know, I, I kind of cook a little bit, okay? I kind of cook a little bit. And uh, when I first started cooking, when I first started cooking, Sister Lily, I would try to take shortcuts. You know, I figured, why waste time if you don't have to? I want to eat. You understand? So anyway, uh, it's kind of like when people bring out hors d'oeuvres, right? What, that, what that's telling you is they, 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 to me, that says that it was a lack of planning. You didn't plan to serve this meal when you said we was going to eat, so you're going to bring me out some cookies and crackers. <laughs> okay, now, if, that, if that's not your intent, don't worry about it, okay? You know, just bring out the cookies and crackers anyway, okay? So, okay, okay. So anyway... So anyway, on recipes, I've noticed sometimes it says preheat the oven to like 400 degrees or whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, I ain't doing that. That's wasting time. I'm just going to put this food in there and cook it. Do you know that it didn't turn out right? You know why it didn't turn out right? Because of lack of preparation. What, what was the preparation? Preheat the oven. Listen, you don't wait till you get to church to come to church. You ought to be preheating while you're on your way. You ought to be, pre come on now. You're going to wait till you get to church to, yeah, to worship the Lord. When you come in, you ought to come in hot. You ought to come in on fire. You ought to come in and say, okay, who, who's ready to join this thing? Hey, hey, hey. Do you notice that uh, when they play the, uh, when they have the game, when they have the basketball games, okay, do you understand that they don't just bring the guys out of the locker room and say, come on, get on the floor, y'all. And uh, the, the referee stands there, they blow the whistle, throw the ball up, they, they play. They don't do that. You know what they do? They warm up. They, they, yeah, people running around doing all kind of, you know, they even doing shots that they know they ain't going to do in the game. They just have, you know, they just warming, they just warming up. And so when, when game time comes, they don't start off cold. But a lot of us, we come to church, we come to church. How many of y'all, don't raise your hand, how many of y'all come to church cold? Just cold. 
Listen, you need to warm up. Sometimes, listen, this is going to sound strange to you. Every night before I go to bed, I take a nap first. Now, I know that sounds crazy to some of y'all. Wait, wait, wait until you try it. See, because one thing I found out, I can't go to bed tired because I won't get no sleep. So what I do is, what I do is I find me a, a comfortable spot, and I take me about a 5 to 10 minute, sometimes 20, minute nap. After I take my nap, then I get up, I do what I'm going to do. If I'm going to get me, eat me a little something, I'm going to drink me a little something, uh, go relieve myself, and then I can go to bed and I can sleep because I've already done my nightly warm-up. Did you hear that? Where can you go? You can talk to the preacher while he's preaching. When you only here, only here, baby. When you don't, when you don't warm up, you have more injuries. How many of y'all have suffered church hurt? Don't raise your hand. You saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason, the reason I quit going to church because I got church hurt. The reason that you got church hurt because you didn't warm up before you got there. When you warm up, you, you hey, don't, listen, don't nobody injure you when you're in the zone? You don't get no injuries when you're in the zone? Listen, I've seen guys when they're in the zone, they fall down, slide across the floor, get up, I'm talking about. Ain't nothing wrong with them. They warmed up. You got to warm up. Okay, okay. Don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to see, see. You got to, you got to see. If you don't warm up, you never get to who you are. And it's important, it's important that you get to be who you are. Because if you don't get to who, if you're not who you are, you'll never accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. You never. Okay, y'all remember that? Y'all remember the cartoon, uh, the Lion King? Everybody remember that? Okay, okay. Do you remember there was a point? You remember Lion King? You saw all the cartoons, didn't you? Okay, he said, he said, I ain't ashamed. Okay, okay. But, but do you remember in The Lion King, there was a part where Simba was missing his father. And he, 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 he didn't know who he was. He was uh, being preyed upon by Scar. You remember that? He was being preyed upon by the hyenas. All of that, and he was just fearful of everything, and he was looking in the water, and he was talking about how he missed his dad, and he saw his dad in the water. And he talked about, Dad, I, I, I miss you. But what he didn't realize is that the help that he needed was already inside of him. It was right there all the time. And sometimes, y'all remember Rafiki? Rafiki was, don't call him no monkey now because he wasn't, he was a baboon. There's a difference. He, he, was a, he was a, did you see the Lion King? Okay. You remember Rafiki? She don't remember Rafiki? Okay, you need to look at it again. So, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, uh, oh, so, so Simba's looking at what, he don't, uh, so, so Rafiki said, do you know who you are? <laughs> he don't know who he is. And all of a sudden, Rafiki slaps him in the back of the head. All right, Wake up. Sometimes God has to slap you in the back of the head because you don't know who you are or you have forgotten who you are. He says the king that you're looking for is inside of you. The psalmist put it like this. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Somebody said, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. That's who he is. The Bible said that he's inside of you. That is your hope of glory. See, when he looked, in the, when he looked and he saw that image, God wants you to look at the image and to see who you really are. See, Satan knows, but he knows you don't know. And when, when, when he knows you don't know, he can take advantage of you. But he knows that when you realize 
the, the, the royal line that you come from, the royal lineage that you hail from. When you begin to walk like you are who you are, he'll have to back up. Don't, 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 you, don't you remember when the hyenas would, would, would say, uh, uh, Mufasa. You remember that? They would even say it to each other. They would taunt each other. One would say, Mufasa. Ooh. The other would say, Mufasa. Ooh. They would taunt each other. Why? Because they knew that there was power in that name. I want you to understand something. You got a name greater than Mufasa. The Bible says that God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You say, well, what that got to do with me? The Bible says of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. My name is Jesus. So Satan trembles at the sound of that name. You just got to understand who you are and whose you are. You got power. So you, you quit walking, walking with your head down. Quit running from scar. Quit running from the hyenas. Quit running from that valley of death. He says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But it's up to you to walk in the life. You got to learn how to walk in it. Okay, I got that. Let me now see, see, no, see, we, we have wrong expectations. When Jesus sent, let me, I, I didn't forget, I was talking about the 70. When he sent these 70 out, they come back bragging about, ooh, we, we was casting out devils. Did you see the devils run? We were just doing this. He said, boys, y'all still don't know what's important. What's important is that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You got to learn what's important. But the only way you're going to learn what's important is that you communicate with him. Yes. See, you don't, you don't understand that your time with God is very important. Yes, it is. But see, you know, you know, when you, when you, you know, you know, don't you, you remember, you remember when you first got into church, when you first got saved, you were so saved, you couldn't even kill flies. You know, you were so saved, you wouldn't kill nothing. You see a fly, blessed Jesus. Save it, Lord. You so holy. See, but you go through this, you go through this transition. It's like when you're a kid. When you're a little kid, you're inseparable from your parents. Wherever they go, you go. You just grab them by the leg, you just hold them. You don't want to let them go nowhere. And then you get some sense. At least what they say is sense. And you get a little bit older. You get around 13, 14, 15. You don't want to be bothered with your parents. You don't want to be around them. Well, don't worry, they don't want to be around you all that much neither. It's not be, no, no, it's not because they don't love you. It's because you done gone through some changes. See, see, even though you don't know nothing, you know everything. Oh, oh how many of y'all wish you were 17 again? Well, you, know, you know, back you remember when we were 17? We knew everything then, didn't we? Knew everything. I wish I was back. You shoot. I knew everything back then. Mama and them didn't know nothing. Them old people, they don't know nothing. Your siblings, your younger people, they dumb. The old people don't know nothing. You're the only one. They don't understand you. If they knew what you knew. But then what happens is you get a little bit older and sense comes back. Either that or you lose your mind again. I don't know which one it is. And, and what happens is, is that you go back to where you understand and you value the right thing. and You want to spend time with your parents. You know, I spend time, I spend more time with my parents now than I think I've ever spent in my life. And it ain't because they make me either. Because I want to. Because I, oh, oh yeah, because I'm getting stuff from them. I'm getting information from them. I'm getting knowledge. I'm getting wisdom. I'm getting counsel. You know what? When they put, when, when they put my two old people in the ground, there ain't nothing going to be left in them because I'm going to squeeze it all out. All the love, I'm going to get it. All the caring, I'm going to get it. All the wisdom, I'm going to get it. Because, it, well, hey, hey, they ain't going to be able to use it. They need to pass it on to me. And that's what we're for. But see, you got to know your value. And, and even when you know your value, other folk don't know your value. They don't know. 
I got to, I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. You know, uh, uh, my, my youngest, my youngest son, we, 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 we connecting. At least I think we are. Either that he got me food or something. But we, we, we connecting, you know, we, we spend more time together. He said, you know, he'll say, hey, dad. You know, there was a time that I would pick him up, you know, hey, you know, man, I don't pick him up no more. You know, he, you know he's bigger than me, right? Well, taller than me anyway. And he'll say, hey, dad, and he'll hug me. I say, hey, son. He said, I love you, dad. I said, I love you too. He said, what are we going to do? You want to do something with me? Amen. And so we make, see, sometimes we, is, we make mistakes with our children. And we repeat the same mistakes our parents repeated with us. I don't know why we didn't catch on. You remember when you left home? How many of y'all know it was too early for you to leave home? You shouldn't have left. Amen. You didn't know what you was doing. Come on now. You didn't know what you was doing? Now I know some of these parents sitting there, oh, Lord, Pastor, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. I got them closed out. No, some of y'all left too soon. You didn't know what you was doing. You didn't know how to handle money. Sometimes, no, no, no. So, no, no. Listen, just because you old chronologically does not mean that you old psychologically. Sometimes you ain't ready to get out. You need to stay at home for a minute. I, so we, we sitting there talking. He said, well, Dad, he said, you know, can we sit down and, and talk about stuff? I said, yeah, we need to get you a game plan. He said, you know what, I would like that. I would like that. And so we sat down, and uh, so he, you know, so we, we are housemates. We ain't roommates. He got his own room. I got my own room. Okay. So we are housemates. And uh, so I tell him, I said, look here. I said, now, here's the game plan. You're going to get your money together, and I'm going to help you get your money together. And what you're going to do is we're going to make sure you got all your bills paid, all of them. We're going to make sure that you save up enough money that when you get ready to buy a house, you got a sizable down payment. Yeah. And when I said, and when you leave here, you ought to have a car that's paid for. So that way, you you living in a house that you can afford. You got a car that's all paid for, and you ready to put your you ready to put a good foot out on life. See, because I want you to be in a I want you to be in a position that should Daddy have a hard time that Daddy can call up and I can call you and say what we having for dinner. See, but when you don't do it that way, when you put them out too soon, guess what? They coming back. Yeah. I don't, and hey, 30 years, you put them out, you put them out at 18, right? You, you didn't even let, listen, they were just 17 and you put them out. You said, like, hey, we got to have a game plan because when you leave, I want to wait. You don't have to come back. I want you to come back to visit, not to stay. Uh, that, way, that way, we both happy. We both happier. Hey, hey come on. And so, so we we trying to we trying to do that. So 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 when he when he leaves, he don't have to come back. And matter of fact, I can leave my place, sell it, close it down. Say, I'll come be with you. You was with me. I'm gonna be with you. But see, but see, wait, wait, wait. But see, but see, we don't do it that way because our parents didn't do it that way. They just kicked you out. You just do it the best way you can because that's the way they did. You know what? We got to learn from them old, them old folks. Y'all having a breakdown because gas is $5 a gallon. Listen, my great-great-grandparents didn't have that problem. You know why? Because they walked and took the bus. They didn't care what the gas prices were. It didn't affect them none. That is not a crisis. You can get you a, you can get you a is it $60? $60 bus pass ride all month long. You just got to plan, and that's the problem. We don't like to plan anything. We really are blessed. Amen. Yes. We really have no problems. Amen. We got a lot of issues and things going on. But the Bible says in all things give thanks. Amen. In all things give thanks. Amen. When things are going good, give thanks. Yes. When yes. things are going bad, you know, listen. The, listen, let me tell you something. The other day I was feeling bad. I mean, I was feeling listen, I was feeling real bad. You know what my father told me? He said, "Son," he said, there's some things you're not going to get over. He said, but move forward. You're not going to get over it. Just move forward. Just get over it. No, I just got to make sure I move forward. 
move forward. That's the best advice he can give me. Move forward. And I want to tell you, move forward. There's some things they ain't going away, but they'll fade in time if you move forward. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. You know, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning how to move forward. It's not the easiest thing to do. But I learned that if, if I stand still, I don't go nowhere. And some days I, I can't, I can't take a, I can't take a full step. Some, some days I have to take baby steps. But I still got to make sure that I'm moving. Some days I can't eat a lot, but I have to make sure that I'm eating anyway. Because every little bit counts.